And you know he talks to you through shooting fiery darts, thoughts into your mind. That's what the Satan do. That's what he does. He is the tempter, trying to tempt you to sin. He is a created being, but with limited, with uh, lim limitations, I'm sorry. Read the story of Job. I believe you will see in the story of Job where Satan came and uh, he took, uh, tried, he was asked the Lord, no, the Lord told him, read the story of Job. Because the Lord, he came up there and the Lord was meeting with the sons of God and he came among them and the Lord asked him, um, where had they, where had he been? And he said, going to and fro the earth, looking to whom he may devour. And the Lord says to him, have you ever considered my servant Job? And uh, Satan said, if you didn't have that hedge around him, he would get him and make him curse God. So the Lord, just read the story and you'll see where the Lord told him to go and mess. He could let he let him mess with so uh, with Job, which lets us know that God allows things to happen, and it's for His purpose. So uh, he let him go mess with Job, but he told him not to kill him. So that's why I'm saying that's what. In other words, when I was telling you, he is the tempter, a created being, but with limitations. He can only go so far. Uh, in the book of Matthews 23, 3 through 36, and John 8 and 44, Jesus called the Pharisees vipers, snakes, and is of the father of their and is of their father Satan, who is the father of all lies. In Romans 1, 19 to 25, it says the devil changes the truth of God into a lie. I was tying in this snake thing. So that you can understand what I'm talking about, the different things about snakes. We all have a fear of snakes. And that's why I said I don't believe that Satan came in the form of a snake when he came before Eve and slithering down a tree. She would have been afraid of him. He came in the image of light. When you have an opportunity, get into your Bibles and read the woes in Matthew 23, 13 through 29. That Jesus said about the Pharisees and Sadducees. What I want to know. <laughs> are you a Pharisee or Sadducee? And that's another program I'm going to talk about. Because then I want you to see if you see yourself when you read those scriptures. In Matthew 23, 13. About the woes. And see if you see yourself as a part of. As a Sadducees or Pharisees. And like I said, that's another program on another day, and I will tell you about it at some point in time or teach about it. Unfortunately, many unsuspecting people follow a smooth-talking, Bible-quoting preacher who leads people into all types of ungodly things. By the same token, in the churches today, they are filled with false teachers and ministers pretending to have God in them. Yet they are Satan's servants who can deceive you by appearing attractive, good, and moral. Some of them you can recognize by their extreme self-righteousness. And you know what I'm talking about, the self-righteousness. Some of those people who have forgotten how they came into the church. And just because they don't do it no more, they look down on you. They want to condemn you. Want to make you feel guilty. Uh, when they do use condemnation, which is their pro, uh, pro, disapproval, or, as I said, try to make the saints feel guilty. John said in, three, John, uh, in, in the book of John 3.17 that he was sent by our Father God not to kill, condemn the world, but to save the world. The world is you and me. And, the book, and in the book of Luke 6 and 37, it says... To judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. To forgive so that you may be forgiven. Remember, saints, God is love. And I have seen some ministers in the church uh, that won't even speak to you. And I feel like this. If you have the love of God in you, it has to come out of you. It has to be released. And people will feel that love. You know, you, you can't help it but to love other people. 
and not condemn nor judge. We must have compassion in our hearts toward others rather than being critical. Because you know what? When you criticize someone, you will also receive criticism. We are to love others and not judge them. You know what, saints? Jesus renews his compassion toward us each and every morning. He has an agape love for us, which means it's unconditional. It never changes. Let me give you some examples of people who have a darkness with them but are no longer with us. And they, But when they were, they were pretending to be the light. If you can remember Jim Jones in the 70s, he was the founder of the People's Temple in Indiana, later moving it to California, and finally ending up in Guyana in South America, where 1,000 people committed suicide under him. Plus, they committed several murders they even killed a senator that went there because some people had snuck out some information to uh, their people, their families, and they went to the senator and he went there and he was killed. And what about in the 90s in Waco, Texas, where the religious group, the Davidians, led by David Koresh, a lot of women and children died there also. Research and you will find some up-to-date cults. That's what they call them, cults. But those are people that follow those people. And when they got in there, they couldn't get out. Some churches have, you can go to and everything is in place. Uh, the choir is in place. Uh, the usher is in place. The praise team is in place. The minister is in place. But there's no God in it. And that's what you got. You got to, I'm going to teach on the next program about the Holy Spirit, who will give you the power of the spirit of discernment, which lets you know when this is not right. He will let you know that this is not a good place. This is an evil place. He will let you know that this person is evil. Or he will let you know what that person, that preacher up there said, that's not right. All right? Today I want you to know we don't serve a fair weather God. He doesn't stay with you only in the good times and leave you in the bad times. Our Father God is loyal to you. I've got three minutes. And in his word he says he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is not a man and he cannot lie. When our Father God says he's for you, he will be loyal to you until the end. My mission today is to teach you for how to become an evangelist, to fill them with faith and truth through knowing the gospel of grace and the love of Jesus Christ, which when you know the truth, it will make you free. And as I used to say when I found the Museum of, of African Ancestry and Research Center, we cannot tell our people any more lies. No more lies, saints, nor give out any more misinformation. It's enough of, what, of that going around already. We will only tell the people the truth of the word of God. I feel the same way about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are no longer under the laws of Moses, but we are under the gospel of grace or the gospel of Jesus Christ, also known as the gospel of grace. Pastors need to stop mixing the laws of Moses, the old covenant with the new covenant of the gospel of grace. The laws produce death through condemnation. And the gospel of grace gives life. I always used to wonder why people never got healed, delivered, lack of, of, of um, provision. What was going on in the church? So many hurting people. That's because they, some of those pastors in there are mixing the laws with grace. You can't do that. We're under the new covenant now. We're not under the old covenant anymore. We cannot live up under the laws anymore. The laws of Moses is death. The grace of Jesus Christ or the gospel of Jesus Christ is life. Choose. I would rather live. I don't want to die. Grace, uh, 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 the old covenant changed in the new covenant to the new covenant of grace in the book of Matthews 5, 17 through 48. Read and speak it when you get the opportunity. Asking Jesus to give you not the knowledge you need uh, and to enlighten your understanding. 
and so that you can use this, this word given to you wisely. As I said earlier, I will teach more about this at a later date. And afterwards, you will be made free because Jesus is freedom. Hallelujah. The gospel is a message. It's also referred to in the scripture as a word, a doctrine, a seed, the good news, the truth, the gospel of grace. Because God uses the message of the gospel to reconcile men to himself. It must be taught, heard, understood, and believed, confessed, and defended. The message is that Jesus is the Christ who was crucified, he rose, and he rose again. In other words, this is the good news, and this message will save your life. If you have faith, trust, and believe that Jesus is real, that he exists, and he is true. Go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians 15. One through four. four. How much time doing? Two minutes. Okay. I'm going to have to cut this short. Paul just came in and told me I got two minutes. Um, I will pick this up in my next program. If you have not received the, the salvation of, of the, uh, the free salvation of Jesus Christ, speak with me. Go. I want you also to read Romans 10, uh, 8 and 9. 9 and 10, I'm sorry. Romans 10 and 9, where he tells us a message you must believe, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died and rose again, that he died for your sins, that he has forgiven you for your sins, and that's all you have to do, and you're, you will be saved. Just call on Jesus. Anyone that calls on Jesus is saved. Salvation is easy. Just believe with your heart and speak with your mouth that Christ is the risen Lord, and you will be saved. Okay, all right. Uh, let us pray. Father God, thank you for the blessing of the, uh, the, of the teaching of your word today. I know my mouth got a little tangled up and my mind was a little cluttered because some things was happening outside. But I'm getting there and the next program going to be the bomb. I just thank you that the people, I hope, I hope they had their ears open and that they heard what you said and received what that was said. Saints, I want, uh, in the name of Jesus, Saints, I want to know if anyone is out there in TV land watching my program. If you are, contact me at 810-742-2693. And if you are the caller, 23, I will hook you up with a brand new Bible. Did I say that right, Paul? Mm -hmm. Be God blessed and safe until I see you again. May our Father God keep you in his perfect shalom, which means peace. Uh -huh. But God will get his glory That's right Now what we see Now what we see Lies Never true It's what he do Tell me